It's something no child or parent should have to suffer through. Children living with a terminal disease takes a toll on the family. But thanks to the Children's Wish Foundation, kids can forget their health troubles for a while as they get a special wish granted. Young Jesse Form is one tough cowboy. The seven-year-old has gone through some serious medical treatments over the past several years. Jesse was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia when he was only two and a half years old. We're in and out of hospital for those three and a half years with various um, infections, that type of thing. As soon as he gets a fever, it was run to emergency, do blood work, see where his blood is at. And then after that, they decide if he's going to stay in or if he can go home. In the first six months after his diagnosis, Jesse and his family travel to Saskatoon weekly for treatment. Now he's in remission. He is probably in better health than I am right now. His immune system is wonderful. Um, they've actually, they're really impressed with how well he's, he's gotten back to better health. But with hardship comes reward. Jesse was granted a wish in 2008 through the Children's Wish Foundation. What did you get from the Children's Wish Foundation? I got a camper. And why did you want that camper? So I could go to chuck wagons. This was the second Children's Wish Foundation walk in Lloydminster. Money raised from today's event will go towards granting wishes for other children. They're just so happy that like they they get their trip or they get a, a as Jesse got a um, camper or a free computer or whatever they wish for. It yeah, it just brings so much ha hope and happiness to the family. It gives them something to look forward to in their really challenging time. There was a great showing of support from the community. Dozens of people spent their afternoon walking around Bud Miller Park, and Newcap News' own Lauren Poland emceed the event. As for Jesse's family, they're grateful they're at this walk all together. As a family, we're extra lucky because we get him to help us pay it forward. A lot of families don't get that because their children don't make it. In total, $11,000 was raised, falling short of their goal of $20,000. Now, if you would like to donate, you can do so by heading to their website at www.childrenswish.ca. Well, it was a very special day today for any boy or girl who ever dreamed about becoming a firefighter. The Blackfoot Fire Department held an open house today, giving children the chance to sit in the driver's seat of a fire truck. And of course, they weren't allowed to drive off in these huge trucks, but there was nothing stopping them from getting to sound the horn. As you hear and they love the fire truck running the lights and sirens and water hoses spraying water and trying on gear and equipment and just a general run, uh, get to run around the hall and have fun. This open house is a way to promote Fire Week and educate the community about what the Blackfoot Fire Department does. It's good just uh, for the knowledge and especially I think for the kids to just gain that knowledge. The Blackfoot Fire Department is also looking to recruit new members. If you're interested in serving your community, you can contact Fire Chief Roland Lundquist at 780-214-2140. It was out with the old and in with the new as the Lloydminster Public Library is making room on their shelves for new books. Now that meant residents could get a good deal as they added to their personal collection. Elise Cox has more. These kids are flipping through the library's book selection, but for a small cost, they can take them home forever. The Lloydminster Public Library is making room on their bookshelves for new ones through their fall book sale. We take all the books that the library can't hold anymore because they get new ones in or they get donations and we sell them and then the profit goes back to the library to buy more books. All proceeds go directly to the library foundation and not only is it used to buy new books but also fund the programs that the library runs. And each year the book sale brings back regulars who want to find good books for good prices. Very good things uh, you can find here. Good books, good reading. It's, uh, it's something that you try to, uh, an event you make every year. But the sale is also about supporting their local library. It's a good cause. Everybody should be here. The book sale raises approximately three to four hundred dollars every year. Elise Cox, New Cap News. One week after facing off against each other, the Lloyd Comp Barons and Holy Rosary Raiders met again for the final game of the regular season. The winner would also take the division title and a bye through the first round of playoffs. 
First quarter, Raiders up 6-0. Bray Josu grabs the ball and runs it in for the quick and easy TD. 13-0 Raiders. Barron score a field goal in the dying seconds of the first. Then Jordan McCormick barrels through the Raiders D for a big touchdown to close the gap to just three. Incredible run by McCormick, but you shouldn't be surprised. He's been doing it all year and would keep doing it throughout the game. With five minutes left in the half, big number 12 does it again, finding room on the outside to put the Barons in front 17-13. Barons feeling confident, go for the trick play, but finally McCormick is stopped. Raiders get the ball back, but they go nowhere. Donovan Granham gets pummeled by Caden Kindop. Trouble continues for Holy Rosary. Granham finds room, but coughs up the ball. Barons get back to work. And guess who gets it done? Jordan McCormick even outruns our cameraman, LCHS, up 27-13. McCormick added one more touchdown. As the Barons come back from 13 down to win 34-27, they get the first round by Raiders face Bonneville. We are just used to them. Second week in a row, we knew how they played, so we just sealed their plays and got it good. Again, it's stupid mistakes on our part that, uh, that cost us. I thought... Uh, you know, they had a couple long runs, but for the most part, we controlled the game, uh, you know, offensively. Um, but there, but there are turnovers, um, gave them momentum, and they were able to punch some touchdowns in there. We're looking forward to the bye. We've been banged up all year, and so giving our guys uh, that extra week to rest is going to be pretty important for us. So we're, we're grateful for this bye, and the kids earned it, and uh, now we've got to make use of that time. On the ice, the Lloydminster Bobcats have a busy weekend playing three games in three days against South Division opponents. Their goal, to keep the momentum going from their back-to-back -back wins against Fort Mac last week. The wheels fell off the train last night, though, against a team that was winless in their last five. The Canmore Eagles scored three goals in the first, chasing Kyle Baumgartner from the net. Jason Warp scored the only Bobcats goal on a power play in the second period, the Cats killed 11 of 12 power plays this game. And the Orange and Black are back on the ice again tonight against the Okotoks Oilers. The Oilers have won back-to-back -back games and the two have already met once this season. At the showcase, the Oilers won that meeting 4-3 in overtime. And more Bobcats news today. Defenseman Mitch Gardner is finally on the move. He'll be reunited with former Cats coach Brian Curran in Drumheller. Gartner is the fourth player the Dragons have grabbed from the Cats this year. He joins Brad Deagle, Tyler Kerner, and Brighton Mills in Drumheller. The Dragons sit in last place in the South Division. The Lloydminster Bandits were on the road again last night, and for the third straight game, this one was decided by just one goal. The Bandits gave up the first three goals to the Tigers, battled back with two late goals in the second by Chris Romanchuk and Michael McKay, but no one could find the back of the net in the third. Tigers win 3-2. And the Bandits play their first game at home tonight at the Civic Center. They're trying to rebound from back-to-back -back losses as they host the 1-4 and four Saddle Lake Warriors. The Warriors have averaged over five goals against a game. The Bandits lead the league in penalty minutes.